Hey. Me? You want to live in a shady neighborhood? What do you mean, shady? You know what I mean. Shady. Well, where is it? Well, you just stepped in it. Today, I'm in one of the most iconic, sought-after neighborhoods in Southern California, Manhattan Beach's tree section. This area is filled with charm, history, and some hidden gems. So stick around for a full tour of what makes this neighborhood such a hot spot for shade lovers, tree lovers, regular lovers, cat lovers, banana lovers, cat lovers. Let's take a walk while I'm on my electric bike through the tree section and explore what makes this neighborhood, you know, so unique. We'll dive into a little bit of its fascinating history along the way. And at the end, some little known secrets the tree section has been keeping from us until now. Well, later at the end. But first, let's set the stage with a quick bit of history. Manhattan Beach, as we know it today, might not even exist if it weren't for some early 20th century developers who saw the sand dunes as they rode by in the electric red car line on the coast and thought, hmm, we should buy this and develop it. Howard Sadler, George Peck, they were active in early development. In the early 1900s, he envisioned Manhattan Beach as like a seaside resort and helped put it on the map by selling lots of the sand section for as low as $250. Hex real estate ads in the day promised buyers ocean view lots within 900 feet of the ocean for $250 to $500. That's pretty incredible when you think about it. Lots that sell today for millions were being scooped up for what's now the price of like dinner for two in downtown Manhattan Beach. Fast forward to the 1920s and 30s when the tree section was beginning to take shape. Lots were selling for 200, then all the way up to $1,000. Over time, the neighborhood grew in popularity and the infrastructure improved. The prices rose significantly. Of course, now you're looking at currently starting around $2 million in the tree section, up to about 10 and a half million. But that's coastal California real estate for you. This house behind me, it's called the Gingerbread House. It's on the historical record. Um, it was built in 37. So one of the earlier homes here in Manhattan Beach. And here's some other homes that I found that were built before that. Now we've covered a little bit of history. Let's jump back to the tree section. As the name suggests, many of the streets here are named after trees. Think elm, pine, walnut, palm. That's the real reason for the name. Many people tell you it's named the tree section because of all the trees that are in that neighborhood. Check out this picture of the early tree section. Hmm, what's missing? Trees. There weren't any. And while it's not named for all the trees, there's still that beautiful tree canopy to give you that peaceful vibe. Where do you live? In that new tree section. <laughs> you know there ain't no trees. <laughs> Guess what else is missing? Sidewalks. There aren't any sidewalks in almost all the tree section. Did you know that? That's one of the secrets of the tree section. Except look behind me, sidewalks. I'm in the martyr section of the tree section, which is on the west slope downtown. It's just right behind me. And there are sidewalks here, but in the rest of the tree section, none. So where exactly is the tree section? Rosecrans to the north, Manhattan Beach Boulevard to the south, Sepulveda on the east, which is mostly known as Pacific Coast Highway or PCH or Highway 1, except in Manhattan Beach for a couple of miles where we call it Sepulveda, just to confuse everyone. Okay, where was I? And Sand Dune Park area to the west. It's just far enough from the beach to offer a bit more space, but close enough that quick walk or bike ride. We walk and ride our bikes a lot here because of our near perfect weather. You can go outside and get your exercise and you also don't have to worry about parking. <laughs> On the weekends, you can hang out at parks like Live Oak Park on the edge of downtown with its playgrounds and ball fields and tennis courts and basketball courts and dog park, or you just grab a coffee or lunch or dinner downtown. It's really the best of both worlds. Peaceful living with access to all the action. Beach is close. One of the things that really sets a tree section apart is its architectural diversity. Originally, when this area was developed starting in the 20s, and then more so in the 40s, homes were built, you know, simple single-story bungalows. And over time, those small homes have been replaced or remodeled into larger, more modern homes. In fact, new construction here often includes basements, which has pushed the square footage of many homes over 5,400 square feet. And most lots are just under 5,000 square feet, but you can find some that are larger and you can find some that are smaller. Currently, tree section median real estate price is $3.6 million, which is more expensive than 98.2% of the neighborhoods in California and 99.7% of the neighborhoods in the United States. 
Okay, the average rental price in Tree Section currently is about 5,700, according to Neighborhood Scout. And back when George Peck was selling those lots in the early 1900s, he could have never predicted how much they'd be worth today. But even as prices have skyrocketed, the demand for homes here still remains strong. Property values in the Tree Section have been consistently strong over the years, making it one of the safest bets for long-term investment in Manhattan Beach. What really draws people to the Tree Section is a sense of community. Neighbors know each other, block parties are a thing. Many homes here have yards, which is a big deal for those with, you know, young kids or pets or whatever. And let's be real, in Manhattan Beach Sand section, just over the hill, finding a house with a decent yard isn't always easy. Now let's talk about the outdoor lifestyle that we enjoy here daily. You know, we're close to the beach, it's just over the hill. But the tree section itself is packed with green spaces. There's Live Oak Park. And let's not forget the green belt, that four mile wide tree line path runs through the heart of the tree section. Perfect for, you know, anybody. Not that great for bikes, because you can get a flat. And then of course, there's Sand Dune Park, whether you're looking for a killer workout or a fun spot for the kids to play, the park's pretty cool, it's a local favorite. Within the tree section, you'll find a couple of micro neighborhoods that probably you should mention, right? First, there's the Gaslight District on 31st Street, where the original turn of the century gaslights still burn during the day, during the night, giving their streets a little nostalgic glow. And then there's the American Martyrs section, which is, yeah, it's a prestigious area. It's surrounding that local church and it's got a affiliated private school. Values are the highest here, especially along the hills on the west slope, because it's close to downtown, lots are bigger, and you can get some ocean views there. Let's play Did You Know? Okay, I promise some secrets. Here they are. Most of the tree section, you don't have to move your car in street sweeping day. In most of the South Bay beach cities, you can get a parking ticket if you're parked on the side of the road the street sweeper is on. It's a savings of possibly hundreds of dollars a year. <laughs> Next, did you know that the tree section has a private indoor badminton club? They started in 1922 and in the 30s, they bought seven contiguous lots and this was outside of town. Currently, the Green belt is right in front of me on the other side of the train tracks. Literally, lots were selling for about $200. So they saved up some money and they bought seven contiguous lots and they built this facility and they opened it in 1941. It's got a rec room and it's got a pool and it's got badminton courts where they have badminton tournaments. Who knew? Next, you need to know where you're going in the tree section or you need a GPS because some of the signs are missing when you come to intersections or they're hidden in the foliage or they've just faded over time. So sometimes you might not know where you are so you gotta keep track. Speaking of street signs, did you know that there are several numbered streets that don't exist in this tree section? There's no 16th street, there's no 20th, 21st, or 22nd, and 28th street is one block long. You know where it is? Yeah, close to Sepulveda, Marine is really a 2400 block, and on the other side of Valley, Marine is 2200 block, and finally, there's no 32nd and 34th street. When they were laying this all out, they could have numbered them any way they wanted, and they did, I guess. I don't know, they must have some significance. For you numerologists out there, please put your thinking caps on and let me know what the problem with those street numbers is. I just think it's hilarious. Whether you're drawn to the shady trees vibe or the beautiful homes or just the amazing location, the tree section really has a all and it's a fun history to map. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit that like button and send it to somebody who might want to take a look at this and subscribe if you're looking for these neighborhood deep dives. I'd love to help you find your tree house.